So I was in Curacao, as maybe you could tell from my tan, my hat, and my really cool Curacao Tiki shirt. I actually got a great deal on this. The guy running the souvenir shop was in a town not too far from me here in North Jersey. He said he got so tired of the winters here that he retired and moved down to Curacao to open up a souvenir shop. Gotta love something like that. Still working, still making money, he's just doing it in a better climate. So today I'm going to be talking about Curacao, the liquor itself. But before I get off on that, I just want to let you travelers know you've got to be very careful of these duty-free shops. Um, in a couple episodes ago, I told you you could get Cuban rum legally here in the United States. If you travel outside of the United States, if you go to the duty-free, you are able to get, bring back like a bottle or two. I was going to buy a bottle, but they wanted double for this Havana Club three-year-old rum. I'm saying to myself, do I really want to pay $38 for a bottle that I have at home? And then I said, you know what? I just paid 40 bucks to get a cab over here to the airport. I think I could spend another $38 for a rum that I could have in my liquor collection because I don't know when I'm going to get back outside the country again. So let me just buy it. The lady puts her little sticker on top so she gets commission for the sale. I have no problem with that because she was the one that helped me. You know, she was following me all around the store. Then at one point, she even lied to me and tried to tell me that San Pablo rum is now Anabe rum. They just renamed it. There is no connection between San Pablo and Anabe. So them trying to sell me even that bottle, so crazy, in lack of a better word. I don't mind if I have more knowledge than the salesperson. I don't mind if they incorrectly tell me something, but when they flat out lie to make a sale, I tend to get a little bit more aggressive. Not in this case, I just wanted my Havana Club and I wanted to move on. And I go to check out and they tell me it's $49. And I said, well, that, that's not the price. And I hate to like interrupt everybody else online, but the issue is, is that not only was it $38, but that's almost double what it goes for because I know the prices. So we go back to the shelf, the sales lady looks and she goes, oh yeah, that one is $38, but that's the seven-year-old. And I said, yeah, that's aged twice as long, so this one should be at a discount. And she just says, no, the three-year-old is more expensive. And I said, come on. You know, I'm not about to argue with her. I said, it's $38, right? Okay, I'll pay the $38. I know I'm paying $15 more than what it's worth, but no problem. Go back to the register, she scans it, she says it's $49. I said, wait a minute, we just went over this. Call the sales lady back, and she, I said, we just saw the price on there. It's $38, it's not $49. She goes, no, the price just went up. She says that to me with a straight face, the price just went up. I just said, no thank you, and I walked away. It's good rum, but I'm not paying triple for it. As a matter of fact, what I paid for this other bag in duty free was double the size and I got two of them for $55. I don't need it that badly. I've drank it. It's great rum. I'll find something else to use. So Blue Curacao, as you know, is an orange flavor liqueur. They advertise this one brand. It's in all the liquor stores. It's in duty free. It's advertised all over the place and it's called the original Blue Curacao. But underneath it says Triple Sec. What's the difference between Triple Sec and Blue Curacao? Blue Curacao, other than the color, uses real oranges and orange peels in the production of the liqueur, whereas Triple Sec is just a neutral spirit, like vodka, flavored with oranges. So one's just something that's just flavored, the other one actually has the fruit in it. Technically doesn't make it a brandy, but they're two different things. Uh, the dry curacao, which is indispensable in the Mai Tai, is something you want to use. 
You typically don't want to use blue curacao in a Mai Tai because then it's just going to turn ugly green blackish color. But they have all different types of curacaos. They have them in red, they have them in orange, they have them in yellow, and of course blue. Now when you're in curacao, you're going to want to have one of these colorful cocktails. You won't see a blue Hawaii there, but you will see a blue lagoon, a blue iguana, a pina colada with a dash of blue in there, another cocktail called Basilia, and probably half a dozen more. I don't recommend spending money for it to bring it on the plane. You're going to probably find it cheaper where you live. The one that really caught my attention was something called a Kunani. The island term for a popular girl that's friendly with everyone and has a really sweet personality. And it's very simple. The hardest ingredient to find in this recipe is just the vanilla syrup. You can easily make this, but at the same time, this is probably going to be the only occasion where I suggest you just go out and buy a bottle of it rather than make it at home because the vanilla bean is so expensive. It's $10 for less than one gram of it. And there's not a lot of cocktails you're going to be using it in. So don't necessarily be afraid to make this yourself, but it will be cheaper if you buy it. And if you do make it, you can make a big batch of these, bottle it, stick it in the fridge so it stays cool, and you'll have enough for your next party, even if that's in a month. Till next time, mahalo and cheers. Isn't happy hour anytime?